Much like transcription, the translation process can also be divided into phases of initiation, elongation, and termination. We'll start with the initiation phase of translation. And for initiation to happen, you need to be able to form the ribosome. And remember that there are two main types of ribosomes. There are free-floating cytosolic ribosomes, and there are also ribosomes that are bound to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. The ribosomes being there is what makes it the rough ER. And a ribosome consists of two units, two R RNA subunits, and these are measured in terms of their size. They're also described in terms of their size. And this size uses something known as a Svedberg unit, or a sedimentation factor, which is essentially a measurement of the size of some material. And uh, the Svedberg units or sedimentation factor, this is really the only place you're likely to see it on the MCAT. But recognize that term if it does come up. Now, the sizes of them are different in prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. And our videographer came up with a really great mnemonic for how to organize this. Basically, you go three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And uh, this is, so that refers to th something with 30 Svedberg units, 40 Svedberg units. This is a measurement of their size. Prokaryotic ribosomes have a 30 Svedberg unit subunit and a 50 subunit. And eukaryotic cells have a 40 and a 60. And you, know, you might notice that these don't add up into 70 and that these don't add up into 80, but that's fine because you can kind of think of it as pieces of clay. If you have a clay with a two centimeter diameter and you have clay with a four centimeter diameter, if you combine those, you're not gonna have a ball of clay with a six centimeter diameter. It's going to be slightly smaller just because of the way things compress and the way volume happens to develop as you increase. The volume can increase greatly with diameter only increasing a small amount. So don't expect Svedberg units to add up to their exact arithmetic numbers. But if you remember this chart here, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and remember that these are the two small subunits and this is the size of the ribosome as a whole, then you'll be able to answer questions relating to the sizes of ribosomes and being able to identify them. Later on, this becomes very important, for example, when you're looking at antibiotics. Those might target the 30 or 50S unit, 30S S meaning sedimentation or Svedberg. These two subunits are distinctively prokaryotic. They're distinctive for bacteria. So if you have a medication that targets something that is exactly this size, then you have something that will selectively go after the bacteria. But ultimately with a ribosome, there's going to be a small subunit and a larger subunit, and those will combine into a ribosome with a given size, a given Svedberg unit. The initiation process is how the ribosome is formed. And what happens first is that the small subunit will join the five prime end of this mRNA transcript. And when it does that, it kind of scans around and looks for the start codon. Remember that that is AUG, and that's a universal start codon. AUG, which encodes methionine, is the start codon. So it finds this start codon, the small subunit does. And then what happens after that is that the large subunit will come and join, and you will get the tRNA that specifically encodes for methionine. And realize that this will have the UAC anticodon. And the beginning or the initiation process of translation involves first the small subunit finding that start codon on the mRNA. Then this larger subunit joins, as does the tRNA coding for methionine that has the appropriate anticodon. And once this happens, you have what is known as the initiation complex, and this establishes the ribosomal sites that we'll then use for the elongation process as we continue to build our polypeptide.